Hey everybody, hey thanks for joining me today. Uh, Scott Ruthven and today I'm going to paint a sailboat for you. I'm going to work in oils and I'm actually pre-recording this. It's my daughter's birthday so when this broadcasts well, I'm out celebrating with her. But uh, I've pre-recorded this. I've got a great demonstration tonight and I will be painting a sailboat from a reference photo that you'll see in a minute here. I took in Charleston, South Carolina a couple weeks ago. Uh, I really like that landscape. Even though I live here in the Rocky Mountains, I think that, uh, you know, the ocean, the lighthouses, the boats, it all really resonated with me. So I wouldn't mind painting more of that. Anyway, I've got a photo reference. It's pretty good. It's really not a great photo reference. So I'm going to try to punch that up. If you have seen my video on painting from photographs, you'll see some of the techniques that I, I, I use basically to take a, a ho-hum photograph and make it into a better painting. Well, hopefully I can do that tonight with uh, this piece here. And without further ado, I'll switch over and I'll start recording. Uh, see you in a minute. Well, tonight I'm painting on a little different surface. I'm using this Centurion OP DLX. Now, oil primed is what the OP stands for. Deluxe, I think, for the DLX. And um, now you can only paint oils on this type of surface because it's oil primed. It's not going to accept acrylic. I'm working in oil tonight, so no big deal. Check those out. It's a very slick surface that you can uh, rub back and, and basically kind of get back to the white surface anytime you need. Um, you know, so each surface is a little bit different. You just got to figure it out and play to its strengths. This is a 9 by 12 and uh, you can see my reference here. This is a sailboat in the harbor in Charleston. Beautiful scene. Really nice place down there. And um, I have a little bit of light, but it was overcast. Um, kind of a silvery light that day. And I like the angle of the boat. It's catching the wind. It's a sailboat, obviously. And um, so I want to play that up a bit here. But... I don't like that silvery light, so I'm going to try to warm it up a little bit here. The light's in the upper left-hand corner. You can see a little bit of it on the leading edge of the sail. And, um, yeah, those white sails there, as far as a value structure goes, I'm going to uh, make those pretty light here. I've put some flake white from Gamblin on my palette today. It's kind of thick. Maybe I shouldn't be, um, maybe I shouldn't use that. My medium is Gablin, Gamblin Solvent Free Gel. And um, probably go back and forth. I've got titanium white here, flake white replacement there. Um, so I'm going to come up with this, the color of the sails. And uh, this needs to be the right value here. It's going to be pretty bright, but there I need to have um, I need to have that inside body of the leading sail there be a certain kind of um, value. It's got to be a little darker because I want the very leading edge there to pop um, with the white because there's just bright reflected light right on there. So I'm I'm taking this white basically and I'm trying to knock it down a little bit in value, but I still want it warm. I'm gonna try that. I've pre-toned today with a um, basically a yellow ochre with a little cadmium yellow into it. And that just helps me reinforce the idea of sunlight here. And I did the drawing first because, well, I want to get that right. Kind of important for folks that know about boats. Whoop. And I'm changing up the color temperature a little bit in this mixture as I go like I always do. We don't want it getting boring. I know on your screen there it looks kind of purple. 
The reason that is is because of the uh, optical illusion you're getting with uh, the fact that I pre-toned the background with uh, yellow. So the opposite of yellow is violet or purple. And um, this kind of, it makes an otherwise kind of a warm gray look like purple on your screen. So that's what that's about. This might be a little too dark, I'm not sure. Nope, I think it'll be all right there. I mean, I want it a little bit darker in value, but not, not too much so. My normal palette today, color-wise, so you can see that on my website if you have questions. I think this would be a fun painting. So Charleston's a pretty cool place there. That's a little too dark. Um, some really nice people I met there too. I've got some some new friends in Charleston that is always fun to meet cool new people. And you know who you are if you're watching. Okay. So I think this kind of sets up the, I need a little bit warmer spot right here. So when sunlight's coming through the sail, you get this illuminated kind of effect. A kind of a glowing light, and that's what I'm trying to set the stage for right now. I won't spend a whole lot of time in there, but I have a mixture of, um, yeah, kind of some, some violets and some warm yellows in here. And I might need to change that as I put my background in a little bit. I'm not sure yet. The other sail there is going to be a little on the cooler side here. It looks like it's about the same value, maybe a little bit darker. Let me get that in. but it's also very white. White against the background. But as we know, white rarely is actually just white. Put a nice long stroke of paint there. You know, white is just reflecting a bunch of other colors. And that's why it's so fun to me, for me, to paint. Got a little too red there. And I'm getting a little dark. Again, it looks kind of purple, but I think it won't look quite as purple when I Get some of these background colors in here. And I, if it does, I can always modify it a little bit here. I'm real close. All of these little bits of broken color in there are real nice too, so. I'm not doing a lot to mix these mixtures beforehand. Rather, I'm just kind of putting them, getting them going and laying them down on the, on the panel here. All right. Well, so as far as drawing goes, you see this uh, vertical line here. I kind of looked and what I would call this belly of the boat, it's not really the belly, but it's it's the point where the the curve of the boat on the side, 
I thought where it's kind of the apex of that curve. And so I've drawn a contour line here to indicate that. And from here back, it curved down. From here forward, it curved at a slower rate and then actually curved up a little bit. The boat's actually coming at us, I think, in, in space here. So, um, you know, it's sometimes can be a difficult challenge to get ellipses and you know slow curves like that exactly right so that's what I was doing there and I'll cover all that up now this is a really it's kind of a deep blue purple violet body of the boat there I'll just get something in here for now. I don't know if it's going to be... I might need to knock it down a little bit. Also, if I change this mixture as the boat curves, um, it'll give the viewer a little more um, subtle hint that, hey, the shape of this boat it's turning. In fact, right here at the front, I can see a little bit of a, a little bit of a reflection in there. Now that I'm looking at that reference a little bit more, so that's kind of interesting. And then at the back of the boat, looks like it gets a little blue-green, which I can go into my cobalt blue here, pick some of that up, and it's lighter in value. I don't want to lose my drawing, so I'm going to be careful about that. And I'll put some of these people on eventually, but I'll leave that for the last little bit. Just get my drawing looking good here. Looking good. Well, then there's kind of a black bottom here. That's all right. Let's see, and this kind of comes down here. And that contour of this white line I'm going to have to put in here follows that same thing. Let's see here. So from the belly Okay, so the other thing I've got then is this nice white I'm going to pop a little bit of that on the edge of the sail here. And it's going to be my brightest, probably my brightest bright. I don't want it just, just white though. I'm going to actually add just a touch of the yellow to warm it up because it's sunlit here. I'll get a nice little bit of that on my brush. And, yeah, let's see here. Kind of comes down. Something like that. Now I picked up some, some of my lines from uh, my pencil. 
when I did that. Now I have a little orange in there. But anyway, so um, that's okay. I want a nice dollop of white here. Nice and bright. Not quite getting the mark that I want. And if I pull down this way, it kind of cuts through the paint. It doesn't leave the mark I want. So, what to do? Well, I think for now I'm just going to lay a few good chunks of white paint on it like this. And then I'll carve, carve back into that when I put my sky in. Hey, that worked out pretty good too. Not a bad way to do it. I just kind of want to smooth that paint out. I don't want ridges of the brush strokes to show. But let me try and get a little, a little bit of a color for our water here. I'll just mix this up right here on my palette with my palette knife. Lighten this baby up a little bit here. And I'll just try a little bit on the canvas. It's real close to the blue of the boat. I can barely tell the difference there. Still want to go a little lighter then. Delicate balance sometimes you can add. It takes a lot more white sometimes than you think it's going to lighten up. A mixture down. There's maybe a little more curve than there should be there. I'm going to put some boats in the background there. I think some of those will look nice. And that water in the, the background is really, you know, definitely more greenish. I think I'll just paint right through here right now because I need to figure out the uh, you know the people later but I'll put them on top. Let's see I got a little bit of this showing through right here. All right. And then at the back of the boat there, It's a little lighter, a little greener, and let's see, the boat kind of curves a little bit, comes straight down and in a little bit. Hmm. 
Okay. Let's see, so what does that water do coming forward? I really feel it does lighten up even more. And it's really still pretty green, isn't it? So how do I keep that? Maybe just a mixture of it here. So there's a little wave coming up. Let's see, and that comes comes down here. And then there's a, a darker and bluer area where the wave it comes down and sloshes around. And so this is where um, I'm going to get these kind of broken bits of color. This is a more blue. And I don't know if it's going to show up really too well on the video, but uh, just slight changes in that color temperature are going to help me add a little more interest to this. So believe it or not, I actually see some of this color too. And that might help me to, uh, yeah, create some form in the water a little bit here. But I'm not trying to paint um, really realistic waves or anything here. Just looking at my reference image for some ideas of shapes and forms that these waves might be taking. And I actually see some really distinct greens in the foreground too. So we'll pop some of those in there. What happens with waves is that um, you just got to think of them as a, you know, kind of a reflective surface. And one part of the wave is angled up and it's reflecting the sky, you know, behind it, let's say. And then the face of the waves reflecting whatever's going on in front. And so, um, you know, you just end up with every time the, the face of the water, the plane changes there, you get a different reflection. So those really light areas are just reflecting um, the sky. So I, if I keep these kind of blocky and big, these brush strokes here, I can get the, you know, the feeling of some of this pretty quickly. Sometimes actually I find that the more, if I put too much effort into these, then I kind of can ruin the effect. I overwork it a little bit or overthink it, especially in water for some reason. And then these little dots and dashes and stuff that, you know, they dissipate off into the distance. The contrast reduces. Um, yeah, the contrast reduces, the size of the mark reduces as it goes further away from us.
all these little things to keep in mind. All right, then I've got, um, so I just keep going back and I look, so I say, well, what other little color do I see in there? Definitely some gray blue. And it's a medium value here. Looks like I kind of have that already in there. See if I can make it a little more gray. Dip into my chromatic black. Lighten it up a little bit. And look to see what kind of patterns I see. It still looks pretty, uh, pretty violet in there. So I'll add some yellow to it, see if that can give me the effect I wanted. Yeah, a little bit. Not so much, honestly. Kind of missing the mark on the color I was looking for. I think the yellow and the other colors in there are messing with my eyes a bit. So I'm just filling in these spots I left before. And hopefully when I go back and I add some of these highlights on the water here, that'll start to really look and feel like water. And then, yeah, I can put some of these off in the distance here. Give some of that indication of a little turbulence on the water. And right up against the boat there, that water is pretty dark. Just a little line of it. Helps kind of break up that edge. Well, I don't know if I really love that brushwork in there. I could have done better, I think. I have to do a little, a little refining maybe on that later. All right, but I'm going to move on. So that 70% rule, you know, get it 70% right and then move on. And then you can judge what you need to do. Okay, so let's get a little bit of that um, background in. And I've actually got some good darks there at the shoreline. Get a little bit of that in there. And I'm going to try to warm that up a little bit. There we go. 
So, you know, this is kind of maybe the undercut of that far bank. So you put that line down first and then you can cut back in with the actual bank itself on top of it and leave just enough that you can tell it's a bank. And this is kind of green back there. I'm just changing up the brush stroke here because I'm going to modify this mixture and lay some more down here in a minute. All right. Now this is still kind of a a cool green back there. I can add little bits of orange and red back into it too to make some interest. And a lot of this doesn't need to really be painted too much. So I'm going to leave that right there. Now, um, take another little brush here, this badger hair. <clears throat> mix up the color for the, the trees and such off in the distance there. So um, yeah, we'll just do it right here. It's a blue-green. It's off in the distance there. Got a little alizarin in there. Just trying to find a, a nice color that kind of looks like it's off in the distance there. Get the right value. That's important. So see how dark this is compared to uh, the sails. Um, it's even borderline yeah borderline uh, darker than the boat itself it's just more muted I think is the deal This doesn't have to be perfect here because because it doesn't. Um, these are off in the distance. If you overpaint these and you make them look too realistic, then your viewer thinks they're a little closer than they really are. Or they're more important maybe in your picture than they really are is a better way to say it. The reason I chose the badger hair is I can squish this down and make some interesting shapes and forms with it pretty quickly. And it's an old one, it's kind of messed up, so I can get some unique haphazard looking effects from it. First time I've painted a sailboat, I think, actually. I did one once up at Grand Lake, but it was a little bit different kind of scene. It was it. It was just kind of moored out there in the lake. Okay. I 
I don't want to lose where I put the drawing of these other boats, but I'm not worried about kind of messing it up a little bit there. But I thought about the placement of it so that they would be interesting. There we go. Now I'm just going to lighten that and add a little bit of ochre to it. And that's going to be some of the trees and stuff back there. All right, easy as that. Now my, my sky's going to be pretty light. It's got to be a little darker than those sails because I really want to pull that off. And then my clouds are going to be darker. So let's see. My sky there, I'm going to get rid of some of this dark paint and give myself enough room. to mix some more sky color here. Um, you know, and it can come out of here. I think I don't mind having the, the color harmony. You know, if I kind of mix this sky blue from what was there. And it's a little bit on the greener side. So I got a nice kind of dull blue-green seems pretty dark. I might have it too dark for what I need. And just a little more chroma for the blue. All right. Well, that seems pretty blue on there. It's definitely a light color though, so I think I can probably get away with it. I should go a little bit lighter. And I'm just going to pop this sky in. Um, I've drawn some rough cloud shapes here that I want. I want to design here a little bit. So that's what that's about. Just carve out some of these shapes of the trees here. And I can even blend into them a little bit there. Look at that nice soft edge I was able to get by just picking up a little bit of that tree color. I'm fine with that. Yeah, let's see. I see some sky through there. I gotta keep this clean right here because I need to carve out that sail. And I got it dirty. I'll come down from the top. There we go. Same thing here. See, it's pretty easy if you, even if you get your paint a little bit, um, a little bit dirty from a neighboring color. It's you know, I mean, you can just push it around and get rid of it. Usually, if you can't, then you can just scrape it off with your, your knife. So I'll start and I'll work from the top down.
keeps my blue clean here. Actually, I might have a little more. A little more sky right there. Hmm, and this is a nice straight line basically. There we go. Now, um, I like how this white of the sail comes down and it's going to bridge the darker the clouds and the lighter sky here. So I kind of like that. I left that as a design element. Not afraid to get into some of those trees there and smush them around. Maybe not that much. And I'll come back in with that tree color again. Just paint a few of the positive shapes on top of that. There's a little bit of that darker base to them. Okay, and then I'll go back in with my lighter green and pop a little bit of that back on top. So just kind of a back and forth. Sometimes you gotta just mess with it a little bit. Find it, lose it, find it again. It's all good. Something like that. All right, now we get our sky color going, or our uh, cloud color going. Well, actually, I think, hmm. Let me see here. Whoops, sorry about the camera. I think what I want to do is I'm going to go need a little more white here. Do a little titanium zinc because that's what I have handy. Okay, and um, so what I'm going to do is just build up um, the sky. As I'm going up, it's going to get a little lighter and brighter as I'm getting closer to the sun. That's my idea anyway. That Naples yellow is good for this, I think. I 
actually as it goes over here it's further away from the sun so it should be more blue I'm just looking for a shape I like here for the clouds that looks kinda nice and light there okay 70 percent moving on and then my cloud so I'm gonna try to get this baby as an entire um, actually I think just looking at the shape of this as I'm looking here I, I kinda want this to be something like that okay um, yeah the cloud the clouds gonna be a darker form overall and I think you know it's kind of a dark gray but I don't know if I really want dark gray I think I'm gonna make this a little bit of a warmer I'm gonna make this a little bit of a warmer shape too I'll just use the same brush um, all right let's find a color here that I like my ultramarine blue is getting a little bit uh, setting up a little bit but see that blue and orange right away that's almost a perfect gray very easy to get that um, like I said though I want it warmer don't want it that dark probably a little yellow in there too just looking for a warm a warm tone that's darker hmm doesn't seem like it's quite dark enough. Oh yeah. Should be fine. So I'm going to actually lighten and brighten this up a bit then after I saw it on the canvas. Okay, so I think I'll start with that and then I'll probably lay some cooler values underneath it. So I'm just going to basically get this going here as a big shape. I'm going to try and lighten it a little bit, a little more chromatic toward the edge. It's going to be picking up some of the uh, light from the sun there yeah something yeah I don't know yeah I think I like this better so let's see I need kind of a cloud shape here um, And I'm scrubbing it on a bit here because I just really want to get it onto the canvas. And you can see there how it um, helps to accentuate the light on the sail. Let's see if scraping this with my palette knife would be give me anything I like here. Yeah, 
Yeah, I might get something there. Not right now, though. Now, I'm, honestly, I'm working faster than I probably would normally since it's a demonstration. But, you know, that's good practice, too, for all of us to, you know, to just try that. Work as fast as we can accurately. I'm sure my brush is not loving this. In fact, I'm ruining it. I can tell already. I better be. <clears throat> I should have used a, uh, instead of a flat synthetic like that, I should have probably used a, um, a hog's hair as, as something to scrub in. Kind of like these, um, yeah, I think a storm was moving in basically. And it left these nice little uh, trails of clouds coming down. Just trying to pull a nice long, nice long line there. This really comes up to a point here, doesn't it? Yeah, I kind of like this darker color toward the bottom of the clouds. Now the mast is at an angle here. I haven't really put the mast in. Probably going to be more implied than anything. Anybody who sees this is going to know there's a mast there. Even a non-sailor like me. sure I really like that design. I don't like that either. Oh, goodness. So I'll wipe some of this cloud back. Kind of a nice color on there too. Yeah, I'll just wipe a little bit of this back and see if I can bring some of the light back into this cloud. Get the feeling I was after to begin with. I mean, that's pretty amazing, huh? Just wiping it back, how kind of re-energizes it. So 
So you know what, I'm just gonna be bold here and mess this up a little bit, make it look a little less mechanical. And then I'll paint back in what I like. Don't want to mess up my sails, so. That's too much. Yeah, I'm not. Gotta give these these clouds some form basically and I'm just not really finding what I like here yet. Um, what I like about painting clouds though is if you um, you know if you put some layers of different very similar value type of uh, colors on top of them you can really get a nice sheen and um, kind of a pearly feel to them so let me see if I can recreate some of that here or not Yeah, and then you kind of just start to get this form building up. And it's, again, you know, like everything, it's a back and forth. but it adds a little fun to it because it's a little more interesting to look at. Okay, then go back into my sky color. It definitely needs to be warmer. Not that warm. <laughs> See if I can. Get something here. Mess up that edge there. I don't really want to make the sun behind there necessarily, but that's kind of how it's how it's playing out a little bit. It looks like, huh? That's too warm. Oh, and now it went all the way blue. 
All right. So what I was looking for there is <laughs> somewhere in between this kind of blue kind of neutralized blue there with neutralized with the orange and again the further away I am from the Sun then I've got more of a blue sky And I'll bring just a little bit of that in over here. And then at the bottom is my more of a green, really light green, more, you know, it's a blue, but it's more of the green. I need more space to work here. Now what's happening is I, I have a little bit different blue than I mixed before. It's not exactly the same. And so I'm getting some variety as I go back in here and pop in some of this blue. Let me look at my reference again here. I think I'm just kind of struggling to get these cloud shapes in here. I don't know, I feel like this is kind of a race today for some reason. Well, that's definitely different. So I think I will work on the cloud again. And that's going to be just a darker value. doing pretty good not hitting that white for a long time didn't I These are pretty foreboding clouds. More foreboding than I want them to be in my painting. But having some interest in there is kind of fun too, so that's fine.
that dark right up against there is pretty nice to make that sail pop. Maybe I'm going to take my, uh, that really soft brush that I have and see if uh, smoothing any of this out kind of gives me the feeling I want. Well, that's kind of cool. What I like about these is it's not really it's not really blending as much as just kind of softening a little bit. Just real gentle. Kind of a nice effect. Oh yeah, I can even bring some of that into these trees down here. need to do to shore this up now. Got all my elements in there. And I think I need to go ahead and pop in uh, the mast. And then on the top of the, the deck there, we've got you know, got some white there, it looks like. It's kind of a cool white. But pretty white, pretty bright. Let's see if I can get this in there without messing it up. You know, I might just put that in with a palette knife. Probably shouldn't be so particular about it. That's a tough one to get in there though. I have to admit. And we 
got a little bit of it back here. little dab of it right here on the mast and then of course we got this really bright white right on the mast or right on the sail here pop, go back and pop a nice little chunk of that in here just some little bits of highlights that are hitting different spots definitely one there too Okay. Well, let's see. Then I've got some lines. And I'm just going to scrape in the lines probably later. Not worried about that. Those details. At this point, see the light at the back of the boat, or that white there is a, kind of a blue white. Nice. Force it a little bit there. And then I got some of these boats in the background. I may as well see if I could pop them in real quick. Um, yeah, so they're off in the distance. They're definitely a light. But they're a grayer, yeah, they're definitely a grayer, grayer, cooler blue. Oh, and I have another picture I'm using for this. If you're wondering why that's not in my reference here, just some distant boats that I had.
Oh, and then some little boat shaped parts to them on the bottom, I guess. Something like that. Can even do just a little one. Off over there. I'll just indicate them because, well, they are so far away I can't really see them in my reference anyway. Okay, that looks pretty good for the non-sailor that I am. I'll just pop a little bit of light onto that one real quick. There we go. Okay, so that gives an indication, I think, of just little boats off in the distance there. Kind of fun. All right, and then as far as my people go, there's some folks on there in, in red, which is kind of cool because I can... Add some different colors, some red and some orange. Um, there's even a little of that weird green in there. But this is really a subdued kind of a, a dark red, it looks like. Luzerne permanent, some white. I'll just make it kind of a grayed down red in there and I'll just put some dots and dashes to indicate people. I'm not following it very well. I probably should do better here. Actually look at what I'm seeing. Okay, I got kind of a darker mass of somebody there. Kind of all running together. And then I have somebody in a white. Looks like he's maybe the guy in charge. Let me finish the yellow, or the red here. it kind of look like a person if possible I mean it's not it didn't even really look like a person in the photograph now that I think about it little blobs of people Mr. White shirt here is a uh, Kind of a simple shape, too. And a dark hat. So you can kind of see it doesn't take a lot to suggest a person or people. 
I'm not going to do the person hanging over the edge. That looks kind of odd, I think. I mean, I get it. But I think it's not, uh, I don't want to draw too much attention to that person individually. Got a little skin. All right, great. Okay, so what could I do to this boat to make it more interesting now? So I got the, the general parts of, the, um, of everything in, really. Um, I want to put a little bit of that white in, maybe? <clears throat> That's what I got to do. The white of the water. Let's get some of that in, see how that's looking and we definitely have some back here that the boat's creating Okay, that's pretty nice. And then on the front end, the bow here, I guess it's a little bit of that too. Yeah, I don't know, that doesn't look too convincing to me, to my eye, but. I guess there's a little splash there that would be happening, right? Okay, then we've got, go back to my pile here of colors for that I used for the water. I can just get some of those and lighten them up and start to maybe just put some of these reflections in. And basically I see, you know, some of these lighter reflections in the water, and I guess they are actually the sail, aren't they? So see, I'm able to lighten this water now a little bit. And I'll choose where to put those. Take a little more time on these just to make sure I try to get it right. And this is kind of the, the darker of the lights. Okay, so bear with me here. And the same thing is I put them back in the, the distance there. They're going to be smaller marks and they're less, um, well, there's less contrast.
All right, so that's probably pretty good right there. Then I've got, um, I think what I'm gonna do is bring in the color of that sky a little bit more, that warmth of that for some of these other highlights. I hope I don't regret that. especially right here I I feel like I can get away with a little more like a highlight edge right there at the bow and then I'm just following my my brush strokes that I had earlier to kind of reinforce where I might have a you know a, a wave that's coming up a little bit I don't need to reinvent all of this every time, if that makes sense. It's kind of nice. Then maybe I'll put just a few pure dots of it. Pure dots of white, just barely tinged with. A little bit of yellow there. I mean, it's not really pure. It's still kind of muddy looking, honestly, but what I'm looking for here is just a few little dots that can take me into, uh, into the boat here. That'll do it. Okay, so what could I do to reinforce the light coming through that sail. I'm gonna mess around with that for a minute, see what I can do here. I think this might be a little too yellow. It's a little warm, isn't it? So maybe I can go into the reds and make more of a pink. There we go. And just pick up a little bit of this stuff that's maybe making this glow. Feels nice, I like that. And maybe even a little more chroma in a couple spots here. See if I can get away with it. I'm even going to pick up a little bit of it up in the this upper sail here. Like a little bit of the edge. Just to make this a little more interesting.
Boy, that's a thin line there, huh? It's not even really what I want right there, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, and then I think I have a little bit more work to do on the mast. Now, I said there's some lines in here, right? Well, how am I gonna do that? I think maybe the best way to do it is just have a something as a straight edge here. What do I have? Nothing. <laughs> Let's see, what could I use? I don't really wanna use a brush because they are uh, a little bit curved. Okay, well, I'm at a loss for something right now to use it, but I think what I'll do is when I'm done here, I'll take a, something that's kind of a straight edge I can lay over here and just scratch in the, um, scratch in the line a little bit here. So l let me work a little more on the clouds, and I'm just going to keep refining a little bit as I go here. Um, whoops. I'm going to work on my sky a bit, too. That one looks good. And sometimes you just need to put some bold strokes into the clouds to pull some of that out. And then there's other areas that need to be a little softer. Yeah, these clouds have been a little more challenging for me today for sure. chroma in there like that and then like I said as I go over over here I'm getting a little more light darn it and then I'll come back into the the clouds here. See if I can't get a nice 
Whoops, keep bumping that. Nice little bit of light. Maybe on the edges of these clouds, something like that. See how pretty that is? Sometimes all of this is just, or so much of it is just about getting the right setup down in place so you can lay this, uh, you know, some of these effects on top. I'm just really lightly bringing this, these colors over the darks I laid down earlier, the dark cools. And I really like the, uh, you know, the idea of kind of describing the form with this. Makes that cloud a lot more interesting. Now see, I'm just making this up, really. But that's all right. As long as it does what I want it to do, visually, And then I think what I'll do is on the counter side of that, I'll go back in and do a little lighter, more vibrant purple blue on the bottom. It's just kind of a counter to it. Same effect, but on the cool side. Sometimes when you do this, um, you know, if you do near the warms, then it creates a really nice vibration. Like I can pop a little bit of this in on top there, and I still get a really nice vibration. So that cloud's, that cloud's getting to be a lot more fun for me to look at, enjoyable. Okay, and then what is also kind of neat then is, you know, you can bring some of that back into the reference. Um, I might have some of this right in here, for example. It's a little too dark. But maybe a little bit, a little bit of this blue violet that comes in on the sail. And I'm just, again, building that harmony. And actually, I could <clears throat> I could probably talk myself into seeing that follow trail the edge of that uh, that mast right there, or not mast? Sorry, the sail. Well, look at that. My rigger came through for me.
looks like there's some lines and such. In that sail. So I'll pop a couple of those in there. And I just chose violet. I don't know. No particular reason other than color harmony. Keep reinforcing that color harmony I've got going on in different areas here. Okay, what else is on this boat that would add a little punch of detail but not get me too into trouble? Definitely got a little something up here. Boom. Um, yeah, I guess I could put some of the lettering in. That sounds to me like I might get in trouble though. Just the word lettering makes me get shivers on my spine. Oh, I guess I have this, uh, whatever this thing is in the front, huh? Little guardrail. So... Let's see, that's interesting. So I have a little bit coming up here, boom. A little bit coming over here, boom. And then on the other side, can't even really see it. Something like that. A little white highlight on there. Okay. Put a little couple of dots and dashes in there for stuff. It's pretty thick paint on there right now on my brush and I'm gonna just come in here and pop some more of this white right in here probably a little bit of the cabin that's showing through and all that right so that's okay and then I'll just clean that up with some of the blue maybe
that's a hard line to get there, I'm finding. Yep. Okay, that's pretty good. And then the blue of the boat. And now again, I'm just going in to paint this boat. Um, I'm just going over it again to add some interest to it. Right? You, you're probably saying, well, it's already painted. What are you doing? Um, but it's just to have a little, you know, show some brushwork. And some variety in here. And it's really a nice saturated blue about right in here. I don't want it too crazy, but I don't mind it a little crazy. So see how I was able to, to tra you know, use this blue paint to kind of draw and trace the, the line of the white on the boat there. So that's kind of cool. And then as I go back, the color changes a bit, lightens up, do we get way back there? It's actually you can kind of greenish back there, isn't it? That might be an optical illusion, but whatever. I'll put it in. And then even toward the front there a little bit. Like I said earlier, there's some of that happening change in value and color. Okay. Um, other things that I might do here, that black is pretty dark, and I kind of tend to think there might be a little bit of reflected green in there, so. I'm gonna knock that back just a little bit. Set it into the waves a little by bringing the black down. Right? Something like that. And then I've got some of that green of the ocean. I can pop up and bring in there too. Some of the highlights. And now all of a sudden the boat looks pretty well integrated in there. I see a little something right here. Put that in. Yeah, I've got some riggings in there. I'm not going to really worry about. I do want to lighten up that shoreline in the background just a hair. 
Oh. Still want it to be basically green. I just think I can make it a little more interesting. Maybe a few little bits of a red off there. And reinforce that. Shoreline a little bit more since I lost it. Okay, what else could I do here? A couple of darks in here might help. Maybe even some other colors on the shoreline over there. Make you wonder what's going on. Just clean up these sails I put off in the distance a little bit here. And I'm getting a little noodling a little away or a little too much on that one and losing some of the form there so I don't want to do that there we go all right what else just looking for little refinements Always little refinements. Little reflected light there. Got a little of that already up here. nice and maybe I'll try a little bit of the little bit of the lettering what the heck hope I don't regret it Well, I can already tell it isn't going to fit. Well, maybe it will. What do I know? That's kind of cool. Glad I did it. Yeah. 
<clears throat> so it doesn't all have to be legible. Maybe that's the trick, is not make it too legible so you kind of believe it. Okay. Getting real close. And then just a couple of juicy, juicy, juicy highlights here. The kind that'll take a month to dry. Where do I want it? Well, probably going to reinforce this guy right here. Boom, boom, boom. I won't say boom every time. It's kind of fun though. Seems like I wanted a little bit warmer light right there, but maybe I'll have to get that later. Okay. All right, I think that's a nice little scene there. So to finish up, I'll, I'll scrape in the lines off, off camera of um, a couple of pieces here that, that I need to do. Um, and I'll just scratch them in with a straight edge in the back of my brush. I probably need to clean up this highlight here as well. And, um, but I need some clean white to do that. So I'll, I'll finish that after word here. Let me get back on camera. There we go. Well, hey, um, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Actually, I got the effect of light, which, you know, when light hits the surface, when it's coming through, whether it's like the petal of a, of a flower or, um, laundry on a, a laundry line or a sail on a boat, when light's coming through it, you get a really warm effect when it's glowing through the fabric. Um, when light is hitting the fabric and reflecting back at you, that's usually the brightest, and it's a more of a chalky uh, white. It's not that saturated warm light here. So um, this piece here that I worked on today has both of those in the sails, and, and most things do. So if you look at like an umbrella when you're eating out, look for those things. If you look up through the umbrella at the light, that color coming through is going to be, if it's a red umbrella, really vibrant, warm, saturated red. But if you look at the top of the umbrella at a lower angle to the light, that's going to be, you know, very white and chalky because it's reflecting that light off of it instead of the light coming through and, and making the fabric glow. Um, so thanks for joining me today. I like the painting. It's a 9 by 12 um, Haven't really painted this scene before. But um, I'm pretty pleased with it. We'll have to see how it comes out after I give it a day or so to, to sink in. So thanks for joining me again. Until next week, I hope you get out there and paint. And as always, leave me any questions that you have. I appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.